Okay. So this session, most probably in your entire life, the longest one. It has about 120 slides. I'm going to be fast, and you will be winner. Okay? So, let's write some crazy behavior Drupal code. Yeah. Okay, who am I? Uh, you have seen me also with this hat, and also possibly as Drupal Reject, uh, Cap Drupal Reject, Captain Reject. Um, cause I was, uh, mainly leading a QA team for about two years, and, uh, whomever submitted anything, I just rejected it. Um, I work with Drupal since 2007, uh, currently acting as a CTO in, in Patent, and also, um, doing lots of things. What is important uh, in this session, because I'm representing security and trying to advocate you to write even more secure code, I'm a provisional member in the Drupal security team. Let's go further. Let me see some hands who love Drupal Camp Poland. Okay, basically everyone. Great. Uh, I haven't told you to put down the hand. So, yeah, okay, great. Like, no question. Uh, who is a site builder? Who builds Drupal sites? Okay, great. And there is a cat. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna show you, ooh, that's gonna hurt me. Um, I'm gonna show you a small demo. Here is a GIF. You can get the code.
such as who are maintainers or devs doing something on Drupal org. I see one hand there. Another one, another, okay, good. So the thing is, I have another question. I'm, I'm like in, in that mood to ask him. Uh, because this time is officially the 11th one when I'm giving this or something similar session. I'd like to ask any of you have ever attended on it before. There is one, London? London, okay. Um, one of my favorite examples though, uh, comes from, um, from a tweet from Darmstadt last year when uh, a guy tweeted um, on a picture that where I where I have shown uh, basically different Drupal 4 uh, versions according to how many um, contrib modules in a year got updated by security team um, and he for a weird reason thought according to that diagram Drupal 5 is the most secure not really. Um, you might see these or they. Hold on. Let's check some trends. So there is OWASP. Okay? OWASP from time to time um, announces the so-called soft test based on the previous years and based on their researches what are the more, the most um, unsecure, the most serious types of vulnerabilities. As you might see, 2013 injection and 2017 injection still rules the whole web. This is about the whole web. Web applications decouple all the time. But over time, in that four years, things have changed. For instance, we got a totally new issue, which happens by um, parsers that parses XML files and basically, via these parsers, if those are allowing things, we can end up with um, external injection, external entity injections, which are injections and usually resulting remote code execution. Oh. But you remember in the beginning, I said another guess, yeah, um, I said uh, there is an XSS issue. Not really. It's just the result. But what has happened on those sites, I basically misconfigured them. Those are also in top 10 for a long time. See? Remember, do not configure Drupal sites and any web application wrongly. Keep it in mind. What happens in Drupal? Because we think most of the issues, according to top 10 by OWASP, are injection issues. Not really. In Drupal, we have that privilege, Drupal 4 is super crazily good. It's very safe, usually. But one of the biggest uh, parts of the issues, like one, uh, basically half of it, are XSS. Then we have a pretty big number of XSS bypass. We are going to talk about it. And also SQL injection, even CSRF. Uh, which turns to uh, cross-site request perjury, arbitrary code execution, and so on and so forth. And the thing is, we are going to start with XSS, which means cross-site testing and its basic new client side vulnerability, which comes from unfiltered output and also the, the thing that I always recommend and I always try to force on projects to never trust any user. Okay? And we have simulation. In Drupal 7 though, these are the types of text all the way down that you might need during your um, coding. If it's a URL or if it has a URL inside text, please always use the check URL. Always start with check URL. If the text has URL, check URL. Because check URL is that cool, it's called check lane, check markup, filter XSS, and all the things that go to the out. Okay? If your text is, for instance, just a rich text, you don't have to use check URL or check lane, but check markup. All the way down. That's Drupal 7. In Drupal 8, we got the super cool Twig. In Twig, 
you don't have to use all the previous things, but basically there are two classes, the HTML and the XSS, and use accordingly those methods. So, here comes the winner and the entity. Okay, there are rules. Everyone got color. Everyone got basically a green, a red, and a bingo. We are going to use them all. Okay? I'm going to show you code snippet. Or a sentence. Please judge the code snippet. Is it vulnerable or not? If it is, show me your red card. If it's just good, please do not focus on syntax errors if there are still. It is just good vulnerability security focus. Yeah. Uh, show me the green. Also with the sentences, if there is no problem with the sentence, show me the green, otherwise the red. And you will get after each good answer, good one, a number. That number you can mark on your bingo card and the first who has the bingo, please just shout and after checking it, of course, we'll get a great Belgian chocolate, a box. Okay, get it? Let's see the first round one. Here is the code. Let me talk a little bit about it. It's Drupal 7, something like a format, uh, first format review, where basically on the item we are just iterating and building up a markup, which has it's not a good practice, but still has an IMG tag that can be translated using author, SRT, and all. Is that correct or having some issues? Please show me your card. Okay, so don't check around. Oh, there is a green one. That's, that's, that's okay. Um, there are many red ones. Can I ask you why, why you think it's green? Because you you see so far from the screen, come come over. Mm -hmm. The placeholder. So there are two types of placeholder. There is the exclamation mark and the X. Yeah. The problem is with exclamation. So if you use exclamation mark as a placeholder, it's never going to be sanitized. So please use always F. And this will always sense. The one who shown me red, sorry dude, can mark number 12. Let's go first. Yes, it's called gambling. Mm -hmm. Okay. You are, you are getting into the game. Great. Yeah. No, it's not answer. When, when you will have a good answer, no, when you will have a wrong answer, and still the number will be there, you will even try. Great. So, here is the next. It's Drupal 8, okay? So, we again just iterate on something, and basically asking an entity type manager for a content, and getting the body field that can be a rich text, right? And asking the value of it, going it to theme, custom something, and basically that's going to be the body that we just throw to the output. What do you think? Is it good or not? It's not good. A few people said. Others? Yeah? Yeah? You are not, not sure? Okay. It's just not good. Great. What's wrong with this part? What is skip? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But how it should be sent That's the question. Nah, nah, it's, it's way more complex. Let's see. So it's the process, process set, which allows you to use the format that according, that is according to the content, is set up like full HTML, all these, all these things, okay? If the user had access to it. So it will follow everything that is set for the content and will put it out as it should be. At least the red card is good, so you are getting this number 23. <laughs> okay, let's go further. I'm showing you one sentence now. 
let's read it together, in Drupal 7, check URL called check plane to sanitize bad protocol properly. Am I right or am I not? There is one green card. The rest of the people still look for the number 23. Great. Um, green, red, I love the rest of the people, that's great. Red again. Okay, I, I feel like you are kinda in an argument, aren't you? Why is it red, why is it green? Let's start with the red. What, what's wrong with it? So basic, the, the, mm -hmm. so basically you say just, just because of Drupal 7, it's red. It's, it's, it's correct. Okay. Still it's a supported Drupal core, so why is it green? Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the tricky part, because check plane doesn't sanitize uh, that protocol, but what does is the Drupal Street Dangerous Protocol, which is only called in check rules, okay? So only the, the ones who don't like the Drupal 7 uh, can, can mark the number 25, okay? That's Drupal Drupal 8 allows full HTML to be used by authenticated and administrator users. Let's speed up, guys. Is it true or not? True. Not. True, true. Okay. True. Uh, still true. You changed. It's true. Great. Number 17. Overall, it's a good job. What we can do to protect our website and application against cross-site scripting basically using as always that behat behavior driven development that just put there some uh that thing such as this one or that one and basically you cover about ninety to ninety five percent of the cases when a field can be exploited by it. Also I would highly suggest to check regularly your filters and user roles and basically do not give too many uh, options to any untrusted user. Here though, we have to keep in mind what is an untrusted user. What do we call an untrusted user? Usually, we as devs are able to judge the user role, say it's a, it's a trusted or not trusted or untrusted, basically based on authentication protocols such as multi-factor or just by knowing architectural um, the, the application. If you have a business who says, no, 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 anonymous is, is trusted, it's okay. Always be there and show my video. Okay? It, it's quite, it's quite, right? Okay, let's go further. Access bypass. Basically, it's about an issue when the user can access to resources or do something that he or she might not do. In Drupal, we have many menu items that can be defined to be success or denied, and also we are in that privileged uh, situation. We get access systems such as node entities, views, fields, whatever. Else. Let's see. Go. Here we come, Drupal 7. So, um, DB select is, is still something that you remember, right? We are asking the note table. In Drupal 8, there is no note table anymore, but we are getting the title and the node ID of all the articles, and that result just goes to you. Access bypass can be an issue here or not. Let me see some fun. Green one. It, yeah. So. Uh, is it secure or not? If, if, it, if it's secure, show me the green. If it's vulnerable, show me the red. Okay. Sorry for making you confused. You will again not get the uh, number because it's unsecure. How would you make it more secure? Go ahead.
if you are already preparing for uh, SQL injection, um, not a bad idea. Um, I would say, put there the node aspect. Um, so you don't have to necessarily filter on status and all these classic things because you can't be sure in the future, for instance, there will there will not be organic groups. Yeah, you remember, right? Uh, organic groups basically set up all different types of uh, access by, uh, access um, issues, and if you use node access or term access or there are many other ones, then basically you always sanitize. Not sanitized, but making sure those will be not shown. Twenty-nine. You gave up at the back, or uh -huh. okay? Great. We get a four hundred four page. Okay, it's Drupal eight. Finally, Drupal eight. Great, right? Better than the happy Drupal seven. <laughs> the thing is. We set up the requirement to say access is true. Any access bypass issue could be here discovered or not. If you believe this code is vulnerable, please don't read otherwise the grid. Hardly thinking. Hardly thinking. Great. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, that's a 404 page. If you block anonymous to see a 404 page, what the what the anonymous will see when something is not found? Yeah, which is like like again 404. So let's say it's okay. Sorry again. In in these cases, I would say it's an easy call because it's cacheable. Uh, it goes straight. It doesn't check anything. For a 404 page, you don't really have to. Otherwise, if you build up like different 404 pages, then yeah, good luck. Um, then you will have issues with that. Number 16. Only for the ones who shown green. Next. That's one of my personal things. Restricted permissions make Drupal site more secure by calling restrict permission method during Drupal 7 function. Is that true or not? If it's true, then show me the green. If it's not, show me the red. It's also Drupal 8, huh? Something? Hard to say. Okay, let me spoil it. The problem is with the restrict permission that basically doesn't exist. Um, yeah. So, what Drupal does on the permission page raises a warning. There is that warning thingy, right? Under all the restricted permissions, you get that warning to not give that particular permission to untrusted users. So, it's basically doing nothing just by raising attention and raising awareness. A standard Drupal 8 allows users to mistype their passwords exactly 10 times. When you install a Drupal 8 standard profile, I'm talking about that thing, 10 times you can mistype your password. Okay, I see two green and mostly red. It's red because it's not 10, but... There is a timeout. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, there is a timeout which is, if I'm not mistaken, either 30 or 60 minutes. So it, it resets. 60, yeah. 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 It fills up the flood. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, number nine. No bingo yet? Then we go further. And okay. How you can make sure your website is protected against access bypass issues? Basically, do some tests, even manual ones, visit some nodes, parameterize uh, URLs, and also use node access, anti-access, term access, all these things. 
and check uh, menu definitions and use natively the user for checking directly permission. Ask your injection. Have you missed the cat? There is the next one. Because SQL injection is that well known, even the cat know what it is, right? It basically unauthorized access to database resources. Do not trust still again any user input. And if you remember 2014, somewhere in October, that was a beautiful day, we got a highly critical Drupal 7 security attack. And please do not call it Drupal 7. Thank you. Round 3. Here is, again, Drupal 8 code. Basically, we use a light here to filter all the people who are something like the parameter that we get from the URL. Is it good like this or not? It's very not good. I think. You, you would love if it's green, right? No, it's not good. Um, because of get, we have to use the escape like. Okay? Always use the escape like that comes from the same um, initiated database. Number 31. Okay. A highly critical Drupal 7 core update remediated a remote code execution vulnerability back in 2014. Is it true or not? It's true. True true means what I say is true. That's green. If in that sentence there is something wrong, then it's red. Green. Okay. Okay, great. You get a number. Because it was not a remote code execution, guys, but an SQL. Sorry. Then uh fifteen. It's good. It's good. Um, what we can do to uh, protect our sites against uh, SQL injections basically is generally just rely on Drupal. Use the Drupal best practices such as the database APIs. And also if you are still on that level to use heavily or not that, not that much, the DB query, we do not. But still, you might use it in Drupal 8 where it's already deprecated and you will have even more trouble to migrate it to Drupal 9, where it's going to be removed. Filter parameters and check all the queries that you have, native queries, in your code. What you also can do is using these um, patterns to automatize um, identity. Some more. And now I'm not going to tell you what could be in here. So, let's generate some files. Using this as a default uh, value of the length, iterate on it, and each iteration pick a random character from the allowable yeah, from somewhere string and append it to the password, such as written like this. Is it vulnerable or not? You are always checking your column, huh? I see that. Uh, okay. Red. Why is it red? I knew that. Uh, not because of that. What What else? Could be? Then you change the green? No, no. Yeah, but you have an empty, you know, string. Huh? What? It's okay. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, there is none. Yeah. Uh okay, the problem is the empty wrong, which is not really randomized. So it used to be random enough to not be guessable in the nineties. Nowadays it's super good. So you should use the Drupal way. Drupal random byte. You need to use that and mark the number 8. It's a never ending story. Okay. Uh, permission. 
we we got an administrator custom module one with a title and description and we used that administrator custom module permission in a custom module routing YAML where we basically just use that on an admin uh, part. Is there any problem with this, with this method? If there is any problem, show me the green. If there are no problems, show me the... Um, sorry, if there are problems, red. Take it. Yeah, I'm also fine. Okay, red, green. Anyone else participating? Okay, so it's fine. Um, difficult administrator, please always use restrictions. Because that will raise the attention for webmaster, for instance, to not give that administrator stuff to any untrusted user. Okay? Number 20. Would you have? Do you have number 20? You can't mark it, just telling you. Huh? Yeah. Okay, here is a contrib. Here is a contrib mode. Okay? The path is again something like an admin, whatever. And we use the administrator site configuration. The question here is it good or not? The question is, ad let me put the question to a different thing. The administrator site configuration by default shipped by Drupal 8 core is a restricted permission or not? If it is a restricted permission, then this code should be good. If it's not a restricted one, we should mention somehow it should be. So, red, everyone else. Green, Because administrator side configuration is one of the six or seven permissions that are restricted. I wouldn't call it a bad practice, but it happens. And when it happens, it's not vulnerable. It's not considered vulnerable. <laughs> 26? I still have it in both only. Okay, still no bingo? No. CSRF stands for Cross Site Remote Fallout Vulnerability. There is a red. You turned on, huh? Uh, there are only red. Great. What CSRF stands for? And the number is 32. Anyone do not. Fair enough. SQL injection is a server side vulnerability. Is it true or is it not? You're never gonna win, dude. It's true. Yes, it is a server side. It doesn't at all affect client side. Who cares about the client? It's number 13. You would have win. Ah, happens. Cross-site scripting vulnerability is in the top three of OWASP list, OWASP, uh, list from 2017. So the question is, Two years ago, OWASP said about cross-site scripting, it's the top three, not ten, top three I'm talking about. We remember injection was the very first. We should know what are the second and the third, or just know is it there or not. Red ones, green ones, red ones, mixed ones, okay, no. No, it's, it's like top six or top seven, but in 20. Uh, 13, it was top 3. Five. <laughs> it's gonna be long. Uh, okay, in case of no winner, never happened. Extra numbers are coming. So one by one, okay? I just say, say the number, if anyone, the very first wins, shout bingo. Number. 18. 
number 27. Thirty. One. <laughs> Eleven. Come on, it's still almost. Thirty-three. <laughs> the problem is I'm out of numbers. Okay. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> empty run. 35. Go. So, okay. Alright, guys. I would say, uh, you should, I should check in, by the way. Okay, uh, could you be so nice to share it with the other bingo guys? I mean, I, I was not prepared for having that amount of bingo. But, congrats. I live there, you know. Okay. There are still a few topics. Very quick, okay? Because in Google 8, we got so many new things, which was presented by Peter Wallenen in uh, DrupalCon Vienna back in 2017, when he basically went through all these issues, saying Drupal 8 got way more secure. One of my favorite one, though, is this <laughs> remove PHP form, finally. Yeah, it's it's like a big win for us. Because previously, yeah, go ahead. Because in Twig, all the variables that go output are already sanitized. Um, except if you use, and specifically use, uh, byte raw. If you use that, then it's not sanitized and you, you have the responsibility to do that. Any other questions about this? If you do have, please check those, uh, check that link, because Peter was giving so many videos. Also, what I personally suggest is not necessarily on a Wednesday evening when we get the new advisories, but a little bit later, maybe. Learn by these. So when we get the new advisories, it always raises, it always suggests as a solution to update the latest version. What happens in the background, basically, out of uh, eight times or nine times out of ten, there is only one single commit. Check that commit, what happened in the code. Because what you see in an advisory, it's basically just saying very generic information. You can check the code, you understand the code, you are all understanding the code. Check the code, what it does, what it fixes, if it's an XSS, then you will see something, mo uh, something filtering, if it's an RC, you will see other types of filtering, uh, if there is an information disclosure or access bypass, something happens with permissions or restricting something, and things like that. But do not forget our greatest theme, which is called Drupal Security Team. The thing is, if you have a contrib module, it will be covered by them only in the case when it is hosted on Drupal org, it is a stable module, and it is not in the state of alpha, beta, gamma, all the Greek letters, or that. And please, the message here, if you are a maintainer, you might uh, get emails by the security team saying about your uh, contract module, there is an issue that got discovered, please go to security.report.org, which is a private issue queue, no one else will see it, and answer the function. And hopefully resolve something for the state. This is not an issue because it's protected somehow else. But generally, please do support. Because what happens by the Drupal security team members, they always try to help you. Sometimes it happens, I know. We are in Europe, mainly. It happens at 10 p.m. It happens at midnight when we finally get something. They are super much trying to save our life, our servers, our infrastructure, our applications, and everything. But they are still people. They can make mistakes, right? Sometimes it happens, thank God, not that right now. But at least, the cats are right? A few projects 
that I would recommend to, to check later. Um, the hack, the security ratio, and password policy, basically all of these contrib modules make uh, your, your project, your application, more secure just by raising some attention or checking the code or uh, hardening some, some uh, policies on passwords. But all the way down, you can uh, attempt on security awareness programs such as uh, I'm going to show a little bit later. Uh, I am organizing you, or you even can subscribe free as a monitoring tool uh, to a commercial product of Robcard and using these PHP uh, best practices for great security. Do not forget, not in the next, but the week after, all week is about Drupal that day in Romania between 10 and 14 June. And come and enjoy Second Day in Bulgaria 25th and 26th October this year, where we will meet so many great and great in terms of great ladies. Um, sessions and sponsors are welcome, so please find your and uh, any questions? Uh, this is really great. Um, this is front end developer, front end architect who isn't it working in Drupal directly, but is creating a lot of the front end, you know, JavaScript, Twig, uh, even PHP, uh, Twig extension code that gets used in Drupal. What can I do to uh, better help uh, myself and my team to support a lot of these security initiatives? Are you asking mainly about how they could contribute well, I'm, or security I, awareness? Uh, you know, everyone, security is uh, a team effort. It's not just a, the back end thing. Like, everybody has to worry about it. So um, it does seem like front end code, even like great components, for example, might not be as vulnerable to some of these. Um, but like you mentioned, you know, if you're using the raw Twig filter, that could be something that uh, doesn't sanitize. Um, anything else that you could think of the front end or? Do not allow any uh, files to be edited. So, for instance, if you remember in Drupal 7, we got contrib called uh, CSS injector and JS injector. So those basically provide an interface, in a, a user interface, where people can inject CSS and JS. And their security vulnerabilities even in CSS. Even in CSS. There you go. Uh, so do not allow to change files, do not leave the files, uh, protect all the background, um, even the smallest file, if, if it uh, comes by, you know, including from somewhere else, there might be some technique to um, to interrupt that communication. So there are lots of techniques how attackers try to even exploit CSS or JS. JS is, is kind of common, but CSS is, is pretty tricky. Okay. Oh yeah, file uploads are yeah. A SVG is like like one of the most craziest forms ever. So do not allow anyone to upload SVG. Control your SVG file. Because SVG in the, in the end is basically an XML. And in XML, everything can happen. Basically a sort of reset. Um, if you don't have any other questions, uh, I'd like to thank you all here. Thanks.